Hi everyone, welcome to Lola's Frugal Life. This is episode number 218. This is my weekly meal plan episode. So please stick around for a few quick words from our sponsor and we'll get right into the show. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. If there is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. There is a broad range of expertise available, which may not be available to you locally. The service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Lola, that's Better H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Lola's Frugal Life listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Lola. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my weekly meal plan. If you're new here, um, I just share my meal plan that I have for my family for the upcoming week. Um, with everyone just because I think that um, maybe it could be helpful to motivate you to get your meal plan together or maybe you might want to make some of the recipes. Um, I think meal planning is really important for saving money and wasting less food and um, reducing stress and trying to figure out what's for dinner. So um, I do use a pretty simple meal plan rotation so I'm not always making new recipes. It's a lot of the same things that we like to rotate that my family likes. Um, I will throw in something new once in a while but um, you know, you'll find that we do, like I do hamburgers every other Monday, I do some type of Mexican, like tacos or um, chipotle bowls or something like that every Tuesday. So I try and keep it really simple. Um, the blog version of this meal plan with the links to the recipes can be found at lolasfrugallife.com if you were gonna make any of the meals that I am making um, for this week. So this week's meal plan starts Saturday, July 24th. And for Saturday, I am making Cuban style pork chops, which is from foodnetwork.com. I make these um, usually a couple times in the summer. They come out really good on the grill. Um, I feel like they look kind of like a fancy grilled dish. Um, pretty much what you do is you marinate pork chops in like a um, like an acidic type marinade. It's like orange juice, lime juice, and then it has some seasonings in there. And what you do um, is after they're marinated, you butterfly them and you stuff them with Um, ham and cheese and then you close them together and you grill them and they come out really good the ham gets warm and the cheese melts and it's just like I don't know it just I feel like it looks like one of those like kind of dishes you would get in a restaurant so I think it's fun to make and um, I do it in the summer because it's cooked on the grill you probably could do it under the broiler I guess but it's just something that I always make in the summer and then I'm also going to do um Hellman's potato salad um, from Food Network, I'm sorry, from uh, food.com. I've been making this quite a lot in the summer, but um, my kids really like to have potato salad in the summer, so I've been doing it a lot, especially if we're doing like a grilled uh, meal. And then I'm also going to be doing Mexican corn on the, t- on the cob, which is from allrecipes.com. Last time I made this, I cooked the corn in the air fryer instead of on the grill. And it came out really good and it was so much easier than having to stand at the grill and constantly turn the corn so it didn't burn. So probably I'll do that again. For Sunday, I'm doing sausage and peppers for a dozen, which is from allrecipes.com. And this is pretty much just a quick crock pot um, sausage and peppers where you just throw sausage, chopped up peppers, onions, um, and a jar of sauce into the crock pot and just let it cook all day. And then um, this recipe actually calls for having san- um, like sandwich rolls um, to, to eat the sausage with, like to make, so- to make sandwiches out of the sausage, but we're not actually doing that. I, what I've been doing lately, because my one order, daughter doesn't eat meat, is I'll do the sausage and peppers and then we'll kind of have that as, a, as like part of our meal. And then I'm also gonna make this easy ravioli bake from bettycrocker.com, where it's just like you layer, um, raviolis sauce and cheese and then you bake it so it's kind of like a vegetarian dish 
although she does eat fish, but either way, she doesn't eat the sausage. So that can kind of be like her main meal. And then the rest of us can have the sausage and peppers kind of like as a side dish with the ravioli bake. And um, that's what we're having for Sunday. I don't really have like another vegetable. Like I usually try and have some kind of a more of a vegetable there, but I guess there's peppers in the sausage and peppers. So we'll go with that. Um, for Monday, I am doing ribeye steak. And for that, I just buy a ribeye steak from the store and I marinate it with uh, Montreal steak seasoning and red wine vinegar and olive oil. And then I will throw it on the grill or um, put it under the broiler in the oven. Um, and then as a side dish, I am making a new um, dish that I haven't made yet. It's from cupofjoe.com. Um, Joe is spelled just J-O, so like cup of Joe with just J-O. And this side dish is pasta with tomatoes, basil, and garlic. So it looked really good. You use cherry tomatoes, which I am growing in the backyard, so I'm hoping I'll have enough ripe ones to actually use with this dish. But if I don't, I'll buy some from the food store. And then if I like it, I will make it again once I do have the tomatoes. Um, I think what you do is basically like bake the tomatoes and the um, garlic and basil. Basil I definitely have in the garden. Um, or in my containers, I do container gardening. Um, you bake them on a baking dish, I guess to kind of like cook the tomatoes and then roast the garlic and basil. And then you um, make the pasta and you kind of toss it together with those cooked tomatoes and garlic and basil and then add olive oil and kind of toss it all together. Um, like I said, I haven't made this before, but it was a recipe that I thought looked like it would go good. And it's kind of got enough to it to be like sort of like a main meal for my one daughter and then the rest of us will have the steak and that on the side and I thought that'd be really good. So for Tuesday we are doing one of my favorites um, which I do every few weeks as part of our Tuesday Mexican theme which is um, chipotle night. So for chipotle night I don't really have a recipe to share here. Um, what I do is I just take some chicken breast, I toss it with olive oil and some seasonings, um, usually just seasoned salt and some chili pepper chili powder, not chili pepper, chili powder. And um, I just kind of broil it in the oven till it gets like almost a little bit crispy, like a grilled chicken consistency. And then I serve that with like um, brown rice and shredded um, cheddar cheese and black beans and sour cream, avocado, um, all that kind of stuff. I'm trying to think what else. I know there's other stuff I put out, but um, you know, pretty much so that everyone can just make their own like chipotle type bowls. And that's really good. That's one of my favorites. And I love to have the leftovers from that meal too for my lunches. So um, that's that we're doing that for Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm trying a new recipe. Um, this recipe is garlic parmesan baked shrimp. It's from allrecipes.com. And it's basically like a breaded shrimp that's baked in the oven. Um, I think you just kind of toss the shrimp with butter and Parmesan cheese and then um, cover it with, like top it with panko breadcrumbs and then bake it. So I thought that sounded like a good, easy, quick way to make some shrimp. And then I'm gonna do baked potatoes on the side and then just like a bag of frozen vegetables. Um, the baked potatoes I usually just cook right in the microwave. I just put them on a plate and hit the baked potato setting. Um, I'll usually run it two times because I never feel like they come out cooked enough the first time I do it. Um, and then I'll just kind of chop them up and serve with like sour cream or butter or whatever anyone wants to put on them, salt and pepper. And then I'm just going to do some frozen vegetables, just like the bagged kind, whatever I happen to have on hand. I always have some uh, of like the steam fresh type vegetables in the freezer. So I'll just grab whatever kind of pretty much anything I think would go with that meal. Um, so that's for Wednesday. So Thursday, I always do either like a soup and grilled cheese or a breakfast for dinner because that's the night I go grocery shopping. So I try and make it really simple. So for this Thursday, I'm going to be doing spinach tortellini soup, which is from allrecipes.com. And I feel like I've made this before. Um, I can't remember, but this looks so easy. I mean, pretty much all you really do is take two cans of chicken broth. I will probably... Um, just use water and vegetable bouillon cubes 
Um, that way my daughter will eat it that doesn't eat chicken. And plus I usually, I use bouillon cubes almost all the time anyway. I have chicken and vegetable ones that I always keep on hand just because I just think it's cheaper and it's so much easier than having to buy the canned broth all the time, especially if you don't need like a full portion. But anyway, the equivalent of two cans of chicken or vegetable broth, um, a package of frozen chopped spinach, and then an eight ounce package of tortellini. And you basically just kind of, I think you just basically heat the um, heat up the broth and the spinach and add the tortellini like you heat it up till boiling and then add the tort tortellini to cook it and then that's it that's your soup so I was like it doesn't get much quicker and easier than that and then I'm just going to make grilled cheese on the side so that's for Thursday and then Friday is the last um, day of the meal plan so Friday I'm making porcupines which is from allrecipes.com I, I make this every once in a while it's um this recipe calls for a ground turkey. I'm not sure if that's a traditional way to make it. I, I've only had this recipe from finding it on allrecipes.com years ago, so it's not something I had ever really heard before I started making this. But what it is is you take ground turkey and you um, kind of mix it with um, white rice, uncooked rice and water, and you make like little meatballs, and you brown them real quick, and then you put them in a baking dish with tomato sauce, and then you bake them in the tomato sauce, and they just come out really good. My one tip here is to use minute rice instead of regular rice because I've always had a hard time getting the regular rice to cook enough um, in the time that it bakes in the oven. So that's that. And on the side we are doing Chef John's Perfect Mashed Potatoes, which is also from allrecipes.com. And this isn't really so much, it's not really a recipe, it's more just how to cook the potatoes. Um, but he just has you cut them lengthwise um, boil them and then you return them back to the pan after they're done boiling and kind of um, t kind of mix them around in the pot with the heat on with nothing else except just the potatoes after they've been drained and it gets out some of the, the um, moisture that's left in the potato and then you add like your butter and milk and stuff and it seems to help it um, taste better it gets more of the uh, gets more of the moisture out and then the butter and milk I guess kind of absorbs better into the potatoes and they seem to come out really good that way so that's the method I've been using to cook when I make mashed potatoes and then I'm just going to do a can of corn on the side so that's just going to be a pretty simple meal so that's it for this week's meal plan I hope this helped you um, in some way either motivating you to get your meal plan together or maybe if you heard any of the recipes um, you know maybe you might want to try some of them so don't forget, you can email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook at lolasfrugallife. You can find blog posts for each episode and especially including these meal plans because they have all the links to the recipes at lolasfrugallife.com. Um, you can also join our private listeners group at facebook.com slash groups slash lolasfrugallife. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. I would love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram so that I can see that you're listening. And if you take a couple of seconds to rate and review the podcast, that would be really super helpful to me. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you have a really awesome day.